Hey, um, I'm Chris. I work at Twitter uh, in the VM team. So Twitter has its own VM team, and if you tweet about this talk, it would be nice if you had that hashtag to give a little love to our team. Uh, so the talk, what's the goal of this talk? Um, I'll basically show you what we did at Twitter with Graal and, and what the outcome was. And, and the goal for us was always to save money, right? Because Twitter is a big service, lots of machine servers, and if you can shave off a bunch of CPU time, you, you will save a lot of money, right? So I guess everyone knows what Twitter is. Uh, it's just, you know, to recap, it's a huge distributed system. Uh, it, we have many, many services. I don't even know how many. Um, but there are some main services like the tweet service, right, that reads and writes tweets, and then the user service that shows you data off the profiles and stuff like that, and, and the timeline service, which, you know, provides you the timeline on, on your client app, um, social graph, you know, all that stuff. Um, these are important services, and, um, and we, we run many instances of them. So we have many JVMs per service, as I just said, especially the main ones, thousands of instances of, of, of one service. And we have thousands of machines running thousands of JVMs. So, you know, all, every tiny little bit of saving you can have multiplies thousandfold, right? So, and, and then on top of it, we have multiple data centers, so, you know, it, it's, it's a big system, right? Um, we also do open source. Um, we use a lot of open source, and uh, there, it, there is this, this link. We have lots of open source projects on GitHub. So, when we thought about trying RAL, it was a good fit because it's an open source project. You know, you go on GitHub, you download it, you try it out, you see how it works. Um, so that's a good fit for us, and it's also easy for us to contribute back, which we actually do. Um, so we have our own JDK built, which is based on, on OpenJDK8U, basically. Um, uh, what we did is, so there, there is JEP243, that's the, the JVM CI, which we backported from 9 to 8 into our JDK, and then we have Graal in there, and then we have something called Contrail, which is a, a JFR replacement type of thing, and, and we have a bunch of CMS improvements. So this is the JDK we're using, and this, this JDK runs all of our services. Um, so why Graal in general is C2, I don't know how many people in this room know C2, and not a lot of you know the source code of C2, but it's really old and very complex. Um, and getting ramped up on C2 takes years, right? So it's, it's very hard to hire people, very hard to train them, and sometimes they don't even stay long enough to get to a point where they're actually really useful and do stuff. So that's, where, that's why in, in C2 there were no major optimizations in the last couple of years, right? There were, there were small improvements, especially intrinsic improvements. Intel did a lot of work there, but there was no major Oh, we redid the whole inlining, or we re-implemented escape. Nothing like that happened, right? So, um, and in my own opinion, it reached its end of life already a couple of years ago. So, and again, probably in my opinion, I think that Graal is much easier to understand. Um, it has a modular design. You have dependencies between the modules, and the build system takes care that you're not breaking these dependencies, and you're not introducing circular dependencies, things like that. There are modules that are platform independent. They can't depend on platform de dependent modules, stuff like that. So it's, it, it has a really nice design. And very important is that the inlining is much better and the escape analysis too. That's where we mostly, which you will see later, where that's where we gain. So um, when, we, when I joined Twitter a little more than a year ago, um, the first thing was, okay, let's bring this over to our Twitter JDK and see if it works, right? You know, start up a service and see if it works. Um, there were a few bugs. I'll highlight a few of them. There, were, there weren't, you know, it, this is basically almost the whole list. So there, it was not 100 bugs, and I'm showing you the, the three most important ones. This, this is more or less what we found. So there was this reoccurring thing 
that unstack replacement compilations didn't work because Graal didn't support OSRs with locks, with synchronizations. So, and we found the bug for it. The exception something, looked something like this, right? Um, and then we discussed this a little bit. I discussed it with Tom Rodriguez, and we decided at that time, that was almost a year ago, we decided it's not really a big issue because basically Graal will fail a bunch of times and then it will say, okay, I can compile this one and see when we'll, we'll take care of it. And, and there were not, you know, important methods for us, so, so we didn't care too much. Um, so, but at some point, someone actually fixed it um, down there, and since then it works. So basically, 128 is closed, but not really, because when I tried to verify that it's actually working, there were a bunch of other ones popping up. Um, like this, no on-site replacement, no generated, and, and, that, and then there's this other one without OSR entry, loop, I think that means, I can't remember. Um, so Tom was asking for a bunch of graphs, and then for the first two ones, I think, yeah, he, he, he found out that there's a tiny little piece of code in C2 that basically makes sure if you're accessing a static final field in a, in a constructor that you can actually do it. Uh, because otherwise, if you can't, you would compile code that would de-optimize as soon as you executed it, so there wouldn't be a point, there would not be uh, a point of doing it. So that was just the time that that's the the C two equivalent uh, method that does that, right? And so better to check now than to de-optimize as soon as we execute. Yeah, okay, of course. So that one was very easy to fix, right? It was only like one file changed at basically a Java version of that method and do that, and everything was good. Then we had this bug that uh, I only saw it with long running processes. And it was super annoying because I thought, oh my God, if that's you know, one of these compiler bugs that you, that you find after days and you don't even know where it's coming from. So um, I, would, I dug around a little bit and then I found out that we're using a, an agent called Heapster. And what it does, it, it does some heap profiling, and that means it has to instrument the bytecode, and that changes some bytecode of especially allocation sites. Um, Graal's written in Java. So there's a kind of this you know, metacircular bootstrapping problem. Um, so it turned out that it was, it was an issue with something called bytecode snippets. It's something very special in Graal. It's not a regular Java code type of thing that you compile down with Java C and then you just run it. It's treated specially by Graal. Um, it's something like an intrinsic, let's put it this way. So, and, and that was an issue because suddenly the bytecode was changed for that snippet and that broke it. So this one was closed with a rather big change, right? Um, but it works now, so that was good. Um, then we had this one, the service started up fine, and suddenly the log would grow and grow, and I thought, what's going on, right? And it was throwing exceptions like crazy all the time. And I didn't know where it was coming from, right? And, and this was going on for at least a couple of weeks, and I, I did not know really where to start to look, where it's failing. I was digging around in core library code and seeing where this, the exception was coming from and so on. And then at one point, you know, sometimes to have, you have to put things on the side and do something else. And so that's what I did. And I, I, was, I was running Netty tests at the test suite. And I found out that the buffer one failed. And the reason for that is there is um, like an optimization uh, in most compilers that when you do a reverse by cut that it just, you know, swaps it around with one machine instruction. That one was broken. Right? It didn't swap the bytes, which is surprising because it should fail all the time, right? but it did not. So we fixed that. That was pretty easy, five change files, so that, that was all right. And that was really it. These were all the bugs we found. And since then, we basically run on Graal in all of our services, at least the ones we run. We don't run all of them on Graal, but the ones we do run fine. Um, 
we started contributing back a little bit. This is still work in progress. Um, so one thing I started doing is because, you know, when I did the slides, nine wasn't out yet, but now it is. So it would be good if we had that. Nine has something called compact, compact strings. And the implementation is a lot of intrinsic code, unfortunately, because C2 especially, and also C1 and, and to some degree, couldn't handle ANSIF implementations in, in a good way. So it couldn't, if you would implement the, the methods with unsafe, you could not get the same performance if you would write an intrinsic for it. That was unfortunate, but that's the way it is. So um, there are a bunch of methods in, in C2 uh, that are hand optimized, SSE, AVX, uh, AVX 512. So we need to port this over to Graal to get the same uh, performance. So that I started doing that. I started with the first one so far. It's the, which one is it? Oh yeah, the, the string compared to method. Um, and you can see the, that was, you know, it was still the case because I haven't pushed it yet. So if you download Graal, you, you get like these scores and then at the bottom you see, especially you know the third line with the biggest size, you see it, it's much faster. And that's exactly what you get with C2. So I just show this and tell you C2 is the same performance. So, we, we need to port all these. Um, as I said, I'm still working on this one. Um, I need to add a test case, of course. Um, and we might want to make it work with JDK 2. So we'll see. And then there are like three, four-ish more of them, but they're, they are smaller. But we'll get there. So numbers. Um, I think that's the interesting part. I chose... Uh, the tweet service, which is one of our bigger ones, not the biggest service, but it's, it's like the first one I've tried, so I, I was just using that one. It doesn't really matter. Um, it's, it's a Finagle thrift service, so Finagle is an open source project that you can download and check it out. Um, I couldn't tell you exactly what it is because I don't really know, but it's some HTTP, you know, send me a thrift request and I give you something back type of thing. Um, so this one, runs 100% on Graal in production. Like all the instances we have run on Graal today, including a bunch of other services, not limited to these, but including also the user service and the social graph service. So pretty much everything you do on the web or on your Twitter client runs through Graal generated code today. And I think it works fine, right? Does it? So, it, it's like testing is, is a little tricky, especially in the data center. You know, first you have different types of machines, different hardware, then you have obviously not just one process running on the machine, so you have very noisy neighbors and, and things like that. So the test setup I have is, is one dedicated machine for one instance, exact same hardware. Um, I run with JVMCI uh, 0.30 and Graal VM 0.22, which is slightly old now. I think we are at 0.30 or something like this. I can't remember. But it, it's still about the same performance. Um, we, we do a, 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 you know, a pretty standard tiered setup. So we, we compile with C1 and then we compile with, with Graal as, uh, as the top, top level compiler top tier compiler and to, it's, it's pretty much like what you have today when you download Oracle or Opal JDK, we just replace, we swap out C2 with Graal. That's all. Um, there is something, I'm not going into details here, but uh, since Graal is written in Java, you, when you start compiling your application and you start compiling your first hot methods with the top tier with Graal itself, Graal will execute as Java code and then it will compile itself. Which is, you know, that can take up some time of your startup. You, you can do something called a Graal bootstrap with a command line option. That usually takes, depending on your machine and how many threads you're using, but that takes between, you know, let's say 15 and 30 seconds, something like this, right? So if, if you just let it go, you know, let it run, um, it kind of eats 20 seconds into your application startup, you know, spread out across your first minute or something like this. 
but for us, it really doesn't matter because we start up the services, they warm up themselves anyway, they have to talk to a bunch of neighbors to set up all the you know, routes and connections and whatnot. So it, it, it was never, no, it's not true, I'm lying. It was once an issue because there is some kind of a watchdog timeout that makes sure that the service actually came up and, and they had a, a tiny little bit of margin. I right? we just pushed it over the edge, but we increased it by a few seconds and everything was cool. So if that's an issue for you, for us it isn't at this point, but in JDK 9, you can, you can AOT compile Graal and, and all this goes away. But since we're running on 8, we can't do that. So this is, this is one day of requests per second. So that I'm just showing this slide so that you can trust me that all of them get the exact same requests. That's very important because if a tweet, you know, if I get a tweet request and, and the tweet has one character or one 40 characters, 280, huh? uh, 280 characters, um, that, that's a big difference in how much memory you have to allocate, right? So all of them get the exact same requests for the same tweet IDs and so on. So dedicated machines, same requests. And that's 24 hours. Oh yeah, and I can't, you will notice there is no Y axis because I can't tell you the exact numbers, obviously. But we'll get to some relative numbers later and then, then you can see. So uh, this particular service runs parallel GC and this is C2, right at the bottom you see the colors and the compilers, right? This is C2, that's how many uh, scavenge cycles we do. And it's a, it's a moving average of 60 minutes because otherwise it's you know, jumping up and down, but it, it gives you a good idea, right? This is Graal. So we're already saving here quite a bit. Um, I throw in JDK9 as well, um, just to show you that it's roughly the same. Uh, I have to, I didn't put that in the slides, but what you get when you download OpenJDK9 or, or Oracle JDK9 is not the Graal version that I'm using here. Basically, I'm using, because when JDK9 was prepared, you know, there's a, there's a long time, ramp down phases and so on and so on. Uh, I think the Graal version that's it actually in JDK9 is from December last year. So, and then there, there were a bunch of improvements in the first couple months of this year. So, the one I've been using is better than the one you would get when you download it today. But you can go to GitHub, go to Graal, download that, build the module, add a bunch of funky command line arguments, and you get the same thing. This is, this is really just to show that there's no difference between eight and nine. And Graal, as you can see, it, it's the same. So, so we're already saving there, so if we don't have to, this, this means two things, right? First of all, we are saving the garbage collection time, but the, the more important thing here is that since we're actually not producing as much garbage, we are producing much better code and escape analysis works better. This is what we really want, right? So we get, like when, when the load's high, we get 2.7% less scavenge cycles and 2.5 at the bottom. So let's say 2.5. Old chain is something that, um, this question, I, I get a, a lot Some of the old chain. It just does that. And it also does, which I, we don't have really good metrics to show that, but I'm just telling you and, and you have to believe me. But it's, it's, this, it's the same for metadata, right? You, you load a bunch of classes in and it has a bunch of methods, you have to allocate some metadata. But it's not, people freak out, right? They say, oh, wait, next slide. It's, it's roughly 40, 40 megabytes. But people freak out because they think, oh, this will grow, right? No, that's it, right? it's 40. It, it will never change. If your old chain is 200 megs, it will be 40. If your old chain is 10 gigs, it will be 40, right? There's no difference. And, and Graal doesn't suddenly grow in size or anything. It just has its, its state and that's it. So this is the important one, right? This is, this is what the whole talk's about, um, CPU time. Um, this is C2, this is Graal. This is C2, JDK9, which is surprising. You know, it, it, what can happen is that, that especially when you run tiered, that um, Inlining decisions can be different from run to run. So I think that's that. 
I don't think that C2 is actually better in GDK9. I think it, it just made slightly smarter decisions on, on that instance to inline than on the one before. And that's Graal GDK9, same. And now I can show you why X is right to ratio, I can do that. Uh, <laughs> so this is it, and we're saving 11% of CPU. This is huge. I mean, I don't know how many compiler engineers are in this room, but if you ever worked on, on a compiler and tried to make something better and faster, you, you know, you, you, you crawl around down there in the 1% range and, and you're super happy if it's two, right? 11 is ridiculous. Um, so I, I never expected that, right? I, when, I, when I joined Twitter, I, I pitched this idea. I said, oh, look, there's this, there's this compiler. It's an Oracle Labs research project no one has ever used it in production before, but I think it would help us. And they're like, okay, let's try it. And so I'm super stoked that it worked out. Otherwise, I would be, you know, don't have a job right now. But so how much? I can't tell you, obviously. But we can, you know, just make up some random numbers and get at least get a feel for it, right? So let's assume you have a company. And, and you're, you're hosting your stuff in the cloud, right? So I was, I was typing in cloud ho hosting service prices, blah, 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 into Google, and a bunch of them popped up. They all have different prices and different ways of, to calculate them and show it to you. So basically, I did the calculation for you. It's like from $170 per year per, per one CPU core to, no, wait, the other way around, 72 to 210. So choose your cloud provider wisely. It uh, makes a big difference. So it's, you know, let's say the average is $127 per CPU per year. So then of obviously, how many cores do you have? As I said you know, earlier about Twitter, we have lots. You, you might not, but in fact, it doesn't really matter. Because, you, oh wait, no, I didn't want to go there because the size of the company also has to do with your revenue in a way, right? So and if you have two servers and you have to spend, okay, two is maybe not enough, but let's say you have 10 and you have to spend $2,000 a year for them. If you could save 10%, $200, you would be happy, right? If it's in the millions, yeah, it's a lot of money for us, but for the company, it's still only 10%, right? So. It doesn't really matter, but you know, just, just to get a feel for how big things can be. And to be honest, I don't even know how big Twitter is. But, so there was an article, this, this was one I found, right? You can Google it. Maybe there's even an article about Twitter, how many servers we have, I don't know. Um, that's from 2014, so it's already three years old. Um, they're talking about two million servers, right? They say something from Data centers, 50 to 80,000 servers, and they have, I don't know, 24 cores. Who, who, who knows? So, a lot, right? Your company is definitely smaller than Google, I would assume. Um, so, uh, let's pick a random number of 10,000 servers. I think that's reasonable. Um, each has usually 24 cores, so you, you multiply that out. $3 million you have to pay just to run your whatever you have, right? You can save 11% of that. That's more than a salary here in the Bay Area. So, you know, you can hire one more guy. So can we save even more, potentially? Um, I was just, you know, I, I spent one afternoon really toying around. Graal has a bunch of inlining parameters as C2 does. So I was toying around. And again, the, my best slide, the request. And I did an experiment, which you know, is just another instance of my, of my dedicated cluster. And so this is what we've seen before. And this is my experiment. So we get less scavenge cycles again. And about 1.5% less, which is quite a bit. And CPU time, it amounts to this, which is a little bit. And on the ratio, 
but not a two percent. And that that was only like four hours of really just randomly picking inlining numbers, right? So I think that there is a lot more you can get. Um, you might not be able to get it with, or at least that, that's what I, that's my current thinking. Um, I wanted to mention here, but I think I forgot. I was just mentioning now. Um, people on my team, on the Twitter VM team, they're actually working on, if Gef, the GIF gave presentations and I wanted to link it um, about uh, um, something called Autotune that does, you can, you can tell the machine learning thing to you know, try different JVM parameters and tell you which one's the best. So that, that's what we wanna try. You know, tell it, oh, try these inlining parameters from A to B and you know, play around with the machine learning a little bit and then give me back what's the best. That's what we wanna do. But I, I, at this point, I have a feeling that um, the inlining policy that's the default in Graal is, is not really the right one for it. I think we have to possibly write our own to, to get to better numbers. So that's probably important to you. Um, it's, it's to a degree important for us too, but at this point, you know, we are happy, right? We have a compiler that works. We have our own VM team. We have a bunch of people who can work on problems if they come up. I don't think all of you have your own VM team, so you might be interested in official support for that. So, yeah, we'll see. You know, JDK 9 has Graal because the AOT solution in JDK 9 actually uses Graal. So, and what's not announced by Oracle is that you can actually use that version of Graal that's in the JDK, you can actually use it as a JIT compiler. It's, a, it's an experimental option, that's why they didn't announce it, or, or not even that. So, it, you, you can use it, um, but at this point it's not supported. Though. But, so there was this email on the mailing list, um, completely innocent looking, right? It, it just says, okay, let's build Graal, re, re, Graal regardless of, of if you build AOT or not. But there's one important sentence in here, let me zoom in on that one, that they would like to do Graal as an experiment chick compiling in the next release, which at the time when this was sent, uh, Oracle didn't announce the new release cadence, so this sentence would mean JDK 10. I'm not exactly sure what that means today, if that means 18.3 or not, we'll see. The, the only thing I know is that the JDK 9 version that I was using, uh, the, the Graal version in JDK 9 that I was using was basically backported all the JDK 10 change sets from upstream. I didn't, I, I didn't want to port it myself, I just took the, the change sets here, applied them, they applied cleanly, and, and that was it. So in the main line of open JDK right now is the Graal version that I was using, and that, it might be 18.3 or 18.9, so you might have to wait a year. But um, what I'm trying to say is, I think we'll get official support pretty soon. So if you want to toy around with that, do it today. Um, we run it in production. We don't have an issue. Uh, there might be you know, smaller bugs that you run into, but there's a community for it. You, you file a bug on GitHub, and it will be fixed, right? So. If you want to save some money, you, you can do it that way. I'm not saying everyone will get 10%, right? I'm not saying that, but there's, there's the possibility that you can. And I think that was my last slide, actually, so give it a try, really. Um, this, this is, this is my, my message. I'm, I'm going to you know, do a roadshow with that talk. I want people to know that it actually works. Um, I don't know. As, least, as far as I know, we are the only ones who actually use that in production. There might be companies out there somewhere that I don't know about, right, smaller companies. But I think at a bigger scale, we are the only ones who are doing this. Um, and, and it works great for us. And we are, we wanna move all of our services to Graal. I'm not exactly sure when that will happen, but you know, 
there will be the odd one out that won't work or will run slower or who knows. Um, but, but we want to get there um, because so far, I mean, uh, as I said earlier, we have thousands of servers. I don't know how many yet. so far we've converted. I don't know, maybe not even 20, right? We started with the big ones because there you get the most saving, but still the smaller ones add up. So the amount of dollars we're saving today per year will be double or tripled once we're done. That's the whole thing. If you tweet about it, let my team know. Thank you. Question. Um, if inlining depends on the CPU, no, no, it really doesn't. I, I know we talked before to talk a little bit about it, so I think I know what you're aiming at. Um, so Graal has support for some uh, vector instruction sets. Um, it's not, how should I say this? <laughs> well, one thing that's missing in Graal, um, at least in the open source version, is that it's not doing vectorization at all, which C2 has. For us, it, it didn't matter so far. There might be a service that I don't know of yet that will need it, and then we have to do something about it. But today, it does not do vectorization, but that doesn't mean that it's not using uh, vector instructions for, for other types of things. It's just not vectorizing loops. Oh. Well, yeah, it, it can in a way. It usually doesn't, but you know, inlining, it's, it's, this, it's this walk on the edge between pushing it over the edge of the method becoming too big, right? Because that, your instruction cache is basically influencing that. Uh, so, but I, I, don't, I, don't, I didn't really follow how big instruction caches are today, but they're all about the same size, right, aren't they? Right. I did not. Um, the reason why I did not is because it, you know, I basically, the last year, besides you know preparing the JDK and importing the stuff over and including it in the JDK, you know, test it to make sure that it works fine, I spend most of my time hand-holding service owners, right? It's like you go to a service owner and he's responsible for that thing to be up and he will get into trouble when Twitter's down. But, and then you go to them and say, hey, look, I have this experimental compiler. No one ever used it before. You want to try it? Eh. So I spend most of my time social engineering than actually engineering. So no, I did not have time for that. But it, it should be done, yeah. Right. I, I also don't fully know, but I'm pretty sure that most of the savings we're seeing is, is because we're just allocating less memory. And that, that also means you get tighter code, right? You don't have to you know, call out to, to the runtime, allocate the code, and, and so on and so on. So you, you can, your code gets a little tighter. Um, one thing that I was thinking about, I should, I should run this experiment really, um, turn off escape analysis for both compilers and see if that changes anything. There is. I, I can, I, I'm not sure if there's another talk about enterprise crawl at Chavo 1 this year, but um, it's basically Oracle Labs has, it's, it's a pure add-on to the open source version. Um, and that one has, as far as I know, vectorization support, and it has better inlining, as far as I know. We've tried it. Um, I did not present the numbers in this talk, but I've, I've done it before. 
So I have previous talks somewhere that, that actually show numbers with enterprise crawl as well. And, and they're impressive. So the, I just tried it last week actually again because I wanted to see where it stands today. But I think it was like the 11% you saw enterprise crawl I think was 22. And that also means that I know that we still can get more. So that $300,000 number you saw earlier is 600 now, or can be. Right, yeah, it's, it's not open source, it's, it's a commercial product, you have to pay for it. But yeah, well, I, I'm, it depends on the license you're getting from Oracle. Um, your negotiation skills are more important here than I guess. But yeah, if, if the money you're paying is less than the money you're saving, yeah, go for it. Against the workload? Oh, yes. Yeah, that's true. That's a very good question. Uh, and I can't really answer that because Twitter is like 95% Scala. And I don't know of any service that's actually written 100% in Java. Because most of our services run on Finagle. It's just the basic framework that's written in Scala. So, you know, um, I'm not sure. It, it might not be as much. So I'm, I'm really not a Scala expert. But from the rumors I hear is that it allocates more temporary objects than Scala does, uh, than Java does. So that would explain why we are seeing you know, less scavenge cycles. We allocate less memory because, because all these temporary ones, they, with better inlining, they get just um, uh, scale up replaced. So I, I'm not sure. It, it can. Uh, probably not 10. But if you get five, I mean, that's still amazing. Yeah, I was bringing that up a bunch of times. It's like all the other languages we use, they're just not big enough. We use other languages for different things, but it's, it's nothing as big as everything that runs on top of the, of the JVM, like Scala, a little bit of Java. So I, I, I don't think so. I was pitching the idea of, you know, we have, sometimes we have these odd languages that run just this one service we probably acquired at some point in time, and it's this outdated, who knows what Python version or whatnot. It would be good if, if we could you know, migrate that to the JVM, and then we could leverage something like Truffle, yeah. Yeah. That's true. So I left that out purposely because that's, that's another whole talk talking about this. So there, there are two main issues with having a compiler written in Java. And one is the bootstrapping issue, with which I briefly touched. And the other one is the allocation on the Java heap problem. Um, the main issue with that one is when you are later in your run and your application is already fully up and, and using all of your heap because everyone's tightly tuning the heap so their application just fits into the heap, right? That's what everyone does. If, if you then suddenly would get, a, I don't know if everyone knows what a deoptimization is, but if you suddenly have to ki kick out one of your compiled methods and recompile it, it could kick you over, over the boundary and give you an out of memory. And the way it is today, this out of memory error could end up anywhere. It could up, if you're lucky, in the compiler, but it usually won't. It won't end up in the application, and the application goes down. So that's an issue. 
the reason why you don't see anything here is because all of this compiling usually happens in the first couple minutes. But we run our services for at least a day or a couple of days, right? Um, later in the game, you rarely have compilations. You do sometimes, but for us, it's, it's not a big issue. And we, I mean, it, like th Twitter is the perfect, you know, breeding ground to try this compiler because pretty much everything that Twitter does, except the database in the background, is stateless, right? You get a tweet request, you load it up and you return it, there's nothing to save there, some state. So everything happens in the young gen. And so, whatever. If you, if you allocate a little bit and then you have to do a collection, yeah, well, do it. So for us, it, it was never an issue. But yeah, it, it's something to think about, yeah. Any more questions? All right, thank you.